Apple's out of the car game. Tesla's got a new Roadster coming with some pretty big stats behind it. And Rivian seems like it might be a mess still. Ross Gerber joins us to talk some EVs. He's president and CEO at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Ross, thanks for being here. Uh, hey, let's first talk about Apple. Was it just a matter of time they are going to have to bow out of this race? Surprise, it took them so long, you know? I mean, it's like, how many years can you spend trying to build something that you're never going to build? And when you know that there's so many other cars that are better than what you're going to build, it was just like a sort of a, a road to nowhere. <laughs> Uh, the priorities for that company before we get into some of the other car makers, what do you think it says about them right now at Apple? I think that's the right move for Apple, actually. I think it says that they're focused on the right thing. I've got the Vision Pro right here, and this is an amazing device with a huge opportunity for Apple to build on their hardware and software ecosystem. And I think they just realize they've got a winner here and they want to go all in on it and they're going to stop wasting time in something that they'll probably never do. Not to mention margins on the Vision Pro, will be much higher than margins on a on an EV car. Yeah, we've uh, learned that by watching some of these startups like Rivian still struggle. The report from them, is that going to be another competitor that bites the dust? I know you're a fan of the cars. What about the financials at this company and the fact that they are going to produce the same amount of cars they did this year next year? Right. And it's really frustrating because I actually ordered a Rivian in December and, you know, it's just like air, you know. And I actually just am ordering a Cybertruck right now, and I bet you I'm gonna get it before the Rivian, which is kind of sad considering I ordered the Rivian three months ago. That said, um, Rivian's gonna make it, and now Polestar just got money, a billion dollars from a series of banks to get them through and get that Polestar 3 out. I think Rivian's gonna make it. They just need a, a, a tremendous amount of capital, and that's why the stock is down. But their brand is, is an excellent brand, and people love it. And you know, once again, this is an opportunity for Apple if they want to get into the EV business for a very low price, they could buy Rivian right now and and invest some money and, and have a great brand to be aligned with. So, you know, Rivian's got a future, and I think Polestar's got a future, but I think many of the other startups aren't going to make it because they don't have the financing. Okay, uh, is the stock uh, investable right now at the lows? I mean, is it worth taking a stab at Rivian down here if the product uh, is as good as you think it is? Well, there's a difference between the product and the financials of the company making the product. And one of my philosophies in investing is if a company is continuing to lose billions of dollars, it will need to raise more capital one way or another. And so that ultimately puts pressure on the stock. And so there really isn't any upside in Rivian stock until they stop needing to raise money, which they're claiming will be hopefully in the next year or two. Okay. So that said, I think Rivian is a company to watch. And for investors you know, who want to be in this space, there'll be an opportunity probably in the next year to get into Rivian. Okay, so wait till they show a little bit more uh... Uh, stability they need cash flow you know you got flow. you know you're borrowing money at 10 plus percent if you're a startup it's not an easy time for for these businesses you know the fed is really killing innovation through these high rates okay uh you tempted me so much to get in on the macro but i want to keep talking cars uh, <laughs> uh hey what's with the tesla stock here i mean everything else seems to be ramping up people are buying bitcoin again for 60k yeah. Uh, why come Tesla's still kind of mired in this technical downtrend? Well, because they're not making more money, you know? I mean, if stocks are pretty simple. If the earnings are going up, the stock goes up. And if earnings are going down, the stock goes down. And Tesla's earnings are going down. I mean, they're not going up. So, <laughs> you know, you're talking at 45 times earnings. You're more expensive than NVIDIA, Microsoft. You're more expensive than Lululemon. The rest of my GK portfolio and my fund is cheaper than Tesla. So. Despite the declines, Tesla's still an expensive stock, so I, I don't see the what the issue is. It's trading at 45 times earnings. That's a, a nice multiple, and it's a better multiple than NVIDIA's forward earnings. So so the, the, the real issue is, should it even deserve this multiple? And that, I think, the market will work itself out. But until Tesla grows earnings, the stock isn't going anywhere. Okay. Uh, so if Rivian's uh, having trouble with production, having trouble with financials, does the Cybertruck which I saw for the first time uh, last week in Naples, Florida. Pretty cool, gotta say. Like I've always said, I'm not a hater. I like the black mat better than the silver, yeah. but uh, you know, it, it, when you see it in person, it, it's not nearly as like obtrusive and absurd looking, I think, as uh, people think on the road. I mean, it stands out, but it doesn't look dumb. I mean, is that gonna I, mean, I think it's sweet. You yeah. know, I mean, uh, does it you become know, a bigger again, think... role for them? 
What? Does it become a bigger role in the Tesla story if Rivian's sneaking up the well, door? I still see it as a novelty vehicle and it's a hundred grand. So how many people does this really appeal to who want to spend a hundred grand for a vehicle that, you know, is kind of just fun. And, and I think there's a market for that. I do, but I don't think that market's bigger than 50 to a hundred thousand cars a year. So if they're going to get to 250,000 cyber trucks a year, they need to bring the price down. And that's going to be the main issue that they face in manufacturing is can they get this price down and still be profitable but the cybertruck is a great vehicle but they still need to sell model y's and model threes to make money and that's what drives tesla ultimately and you know i think they're still struggling to do this and the question is whether model y has a halo effect and convinces people i mean whether cybertruck convinces people to buy model y's and and i'm not sure that that that's what's happening I see. Okay. All right. Uh, how about this Roadster claim? Zero to 60 in a second. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know that was possible if you're not like a Formula One racer. Is that even street legal? Can you make a car like that and hand it to average Joe? It's funny you brought that up. Actually, what will happen is the car will lift off the ground and, and get airborne from the, <laughs> the air. So that's actually not a realistic number. You know, where we're at now at two seconds on the plaid almost makes me dizzy. So like when you go that fast it's really hard for your body to keep up with the speed you know like the, the plaid is faster than what your body can take you know and so the idea that you would be even twice as fast you'd get it down to a second i don't think the human body can take that and then secondly i think it'd be very easy for the car to get airborne and that's why formula one has all those you know things they use to keep the car you know pushing down onto the ground so i think that's a nice idea i think elon has a little ego thing going on because the Yang Wang came out from BYD, and this is a supercar made by the Chinese, and he wants to show that he can make a better supercar. Okay. Uh, there was a big article uh, yesterday about how uh, we all might be driving BYDs soon. Uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about that? I think there's a low likelihood of that, but I think that they can do pretty well in the U.S. market if they do what Hyundai did, which is change their name, make it American, and make the brand its own so it's not identified to a nationality. And I think that... That's what Genesis has done so well. I think we've seen this with the, the Korean brands very successfully. So I think BYD could do that, but they need to come up with a brand that really appeals to Americans. Got it. All right. Thanks for the thoughts, uh, Ross. Interesting stuff. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ross Gerber, President and CEO at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management.